nucleus and mitosis. Here we see the pancreatic astner cells, uh, and we've been looking at those cells for the cytoplasm. Today we're going to look at the nucleus of those cells. Here you can see one of those cells. Uh, here we see number three, there's a nucleolus, and here is a nucleus. Another one of those cells, the nucleus, spherical nucleus, dark staining heterochromatin, and light staining euchromatin. Uh, in 158 slide, we can see those uh, cells. Here at the bottom, we can see uh, the heterochromatin and the euchromatin, uh, lots of euchromatin in these cells. Uh, again, uh, we can see the nuclei located around the outside of the alveolus, uh, and some of them have a very distinct nucleolus. Uh, others, uh, it's not cut in that profile to see it. In slide 156, we can see another. We can see the spherical nucleus, a lot of euchromatin, and the heterochromous staining of the nucleolus. Another nucleolus right in through there uh, is the structure that we'll be talking about today. Uh, we'll also look at the liver. Remember the liver has a lobule and then it have cords of cells that go from here to the inside toward the central vein. And we see one of those uh, uh, cords of cells uh, and there's a nucleus of the cell. If we look at that cell, uh, uh, this is the nucleus of electron microscopic view showing you the heterochromatin around the edge and the euchromatin all inside there, lots of euchromatin in the uh, hepatic uh, cell nucleus. Uh, and also we can see nuclear pores. We can see the nuclear envelope in through there on the outer leaflet of the nuclear envelope. We can see ribosomes, ribosomes through there. There's rough ER with ribosomes as well. But we're supposed to see the nuclear pores today uh, where uh, you, you have heterochromatin come up to the edge of the core, a, a pore, uh, and where the messenger RNA can escape from the, from the pore. Uh, again, we can see another one of those cells. Here's the nucleus, uh, the heterochromatin, uh, okay, it's through here. But this is a cross-section uh, of the nuclear pores. There's a nuclear pore here, here, uh, and here we can actually see. We can't see the, where the membrane is because we're uh, cutting it on face. We're actually cutting it perpendicular to the typical view of the membrane. Another cell we want to look at is the parietal cells which are in the stomach. And we've seen those before. Pyramid shape cell, the base, the lumen up, up through here. Where we have microvilli projecting off these uh, parietal cells. But you see a very nice nucleus, uh, distinct nucleolus in through there. Uh, the mucus next cell beside it has a couple of nucleoli as well, heterochromatin, euchromatin, and here are fibroblasts. We can see the heterochromatin and the euchromatin of a fibroblast, and we can see three different shapes of nuclei uh, of the cells, but this being the parietal cell that produces hydrochloric acid. <clears throat> uh, in blood, we see a host of different shapes of cells. The eosinophil has a libelated uh, nucleus. But uh, today we'll be looking at the lymphocytes, which has a spherical nucleus. It's mostly uh, quiescent until uh, it becomes activated, and we'll learn how it becomes activated later on. This is a, a carbon replica transmission electron uh, micrograph of a lymphocyte showing you the cytoplasm, and it's showing you the two different leaflets of the nuclear envelope. And here we can see nuclear pores. These are nuclear pores where messenger RNA can come out of the nucleus uh, for protein synthesis to occur. We're also uh, going to see a cell division, uh, and we'll see in slide 102 uh, a different groups of, of cells. Here's one in metaphase in this point. Uh, here's one in uh, uh, anaphase. Uh, another one in metaphase. Uh, anaphase just about to pull apart. Uh, here, <clears throat> here we can see uh, anaphase again, metaphase up to there, telophase, they've already pulled apart, telophase right here. So the different uh, groups of cells. This is prophase where the chromosomes are just getting together and these cells are in uh, interphase, interphase in between. And we're uh, supposed to look at the different components. You've got uh, prophase, 
uh, where the chromosomes are, are, are lining up. Uh, you got uh, pro-metaphase where uh, things are becoming equalized. Finally, at the metaphase plate, uh, they are lined up, and at the phase, uh, they are pulling apart, uh, as we see uh, here. And then we have different uh, three different <coughs> events. <coughs> you got orientation, uh, where you get the chromosomes oriented, uh, getting equalized, and then you got alignment, which is in the metaphase plate, uh, and then finally you got segregation, the three major events. Uh, that occurs. In addition to uh, uh, telophase, whenever the, uh, the nuclear envelope is about to re-establish uh, uh, and the, the nuclei pull apart, you have cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is where you have actin filaments, the microfilaments, squeeze down the surface of the cell uh, to separate the two different cells completely. Also, during the uh, during interphase, you have the nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope breaks down during prometaphase, uh, and then it reassembles back in telophase. So, during the time you have chromosomes pulling apart, lining up, and all that, you do not have the nuclear envelope. So, there's three groups of microtubules that are involved: the polar microtubules that push things at the poles or push the poles apart. You have the astro microtubules that pull the different poles apart and, and stretches out the cell. And then you have the kinetochore microtubules uh, that are attached to the chromosome that shorten to pull the, the chromosomes to the different uh, poles. So uh, you astro microtubules pulling out. Um, uh, you, uh, you, you have uh, the uh, polar microtubules pushing, uh, and then you have uh, the kinetic core microtubules shortening, and whenever they shorten, they pull the chromosomes uh, to the to the side. Here we see uh, the atlas view uh, of intestinal absorptive cells, uh, simple columnar epithelial cells with brush borders, but today we're going to look at the nucleus inside. And here we see in 152, uh, the nuclei of these different cells. Sometimes you can see the nucleoli uh, in there as well. Uh, different cells we see intestinal absorptive cells, agobit cells, and these are some pennant cells uh, at the very bottom. Again, we can see uh, nuclei, interphase nuclei, but also we can see metaphase plates. So this is an indication of, of cell division occurring. <clears throat> Here we see uh, anaphase where two are pulled apart, another metaphase uh, over here. So this is right in a deep part, right above the pendant cells uh, of the intestinal glands is where you get mitotic activity occur occurring. Here's be telophase. Here's another uh, uh, telophase, anaphase, telophase, uh, in through there. Prophase, uh, as we see, another one, I can't see the whole thing. These are sections through it, so it's not the whole cell. It's just a section through it. Another telophase, maybe maybe metaphase down there. And here certainly is a metaphase uh, in through there. I can't see enough of that one. It said this is probably prophase too. Uh, but uh, again, we can see a metaphase, and uh, you can see the uh, early late an uh, anaphase or telophase, uh, depending upon whether or not uh, it's uh, developed or not. Prophase. Uh, uh, telophase in through here. Also, you'll be able to see it uh, in the telutinib blue slide. So, if this is the lumen in through there, these are the muscle layers down through there, right in through here is where you see <clears throat> mitotic activity to occur. It's going to be more difficult for you to see that uh, because uh, the staining is a little different than, uh, than uh, what you uh, normally see when you see the darker a metaphase place. But if you look real good, you can see this is a nice metaphase. Here we can see mitochondria in through there. And usually the, the cytoplasm of the cell is a little lighter than that around it. That's another key that you can see. So there's a metaphase plate here. Here we've got two pulled apart. So these would be telophase. There's actually three of them there. There's, you can't see the fourth one. 
uh, and then these guys here are just pulled apart too, prophase in through there. So you can see these, but if you look, note at the cytoplasm, there's another one. We can't see the nucleus, but these are all dividing cells that you have to look carefully for to be able to distinguish those from these. Also look at the nuclei of these where you can see more detail in the toluidin blue, a nucleolus, euchromatin, and then you can see the heterochromatin. Uh, in through there. In between there you see fibroblasts uh, as well. And in fact, uh, here we can see a muscle cell um, in the blood vessel and we can see uh, the heterochromatin uh, on the edge and the euchromatin light, uh, euchromatin uh, in through there. We'll also uh, look at the testis and we'll note a couple of cells. Um, a Sertoli cell is a nurse cell. Uh, they nurse the germ cells developing in through there, and we'll look at the nucleus of the Sertoli cell. We've already looked at the microtubules of the Sertoli cell, but here we can see an indented nuclear envelope, and uh, the projection here actually runs up to this region here. So this is also part of the nucleus of the Sertoli cell, and we want to concentrate in this region right in through there. First we see there is a, uh, a, a lot of uh, euchromatin. Uh, now, the Sertoli cell has a big nucleolus. It's not in view here, but you can see that it is. But we want to concentrate in this region, and here you can see. You can see cross-sections of nuclear pores in this region where it's just cut through the sliver of it. And that's what we're supposed to see on the micrograph today. This slide shows you the effect of cultrocene uh, on uh, dividing cells. Cultrosine breaks down microtubules and microtubules are important in separating the chromosomes and here you can see the microtubules are radiating from the uh, centrosomes uh, attached to the chromosomes uh, in, in the middle. Um, as the uh, chromosomes are pulled apart uh, they form a, a group of chromosomes together and the nuclear envelope uh, normally surrounds uh, that group of chromosomes in each of the two daughter cells. However, with cultrosine treatment, it breaks down the microtubules, and as a consequence, you have uh, nuclei of various sizes because the chromosomes do not go out together, and there's a nuclear envelope that develops around each one of the, of the chromosomes. And we can see that uh, to get uh, on slide of 401, we can see that where you have uh, multiple nuclei of various sizes uh, as a consequence of the chromosomes not staying together uh, because the microtubules were not there to direct them with cultrosine treatment. So instead of staying together as they are in this slide here, where they have a complete nucleus, uh, they separate and each one of those facilitate a nuclear envelope so you have multiple uh, nuclei within within the cell. Now in contrast if you treat the cells with cyclodacin D uh, which um, uh, uh, interferes with the microfilaments uh, then you have uh, cytokinesis it complete so the microtubules are there uh, they uh, divide the, uh, the um, DNA and the chromosomes however they do not have complete cytokinesis. And here we can see cytokinesis, uh, the division of the cell, microfilaments are involved, and if you remove those, uh, what you have as a result is multinucleated uh, cells. And we can see that again on the left-hand side of slide uh, 401, uh, you can see uh, binucleate cells as a result of lack of cytokinesis. So <clears throat> we can see here again how the microfilaments are involved in squeezing down the cell uh, for cytokinesis uh, to occur after uh, the microtubules have been involved in separating, uh, separating the chromosomes. So today we were able to see nucleus and mitosis, uh, pancreatic astronaut cells. We also looked at hepatocytes, uh, the cells in the stomach, uh, the parietal cells as well as intestinal absorptive cell. Thank you.